Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to talk about today is optimizing flows through front-mounted heat exchangers. Heat exchangers like what then? Well, radiator, intercooler, oil cooler, air conditioning condenser, those sort of heat exchangers. Now, to achieve maximum flow through those uh, coolers, what you need is a high pressure differential. Higher pressure on the front face, lower pressure behind those coolers so that the air is actually forced through. What governs the pressures on each side? Because the higher that differential, the better the flow. Well, on the front face of those coolers, the pressure is determined by two things. One is how fast are you going? Because the faster you go, the higher the aerodynamic pressure build up on the front of that car, the stagnation zone of the car. And the second thing is how well uh, is that pressure actually communicated to the front face of those heat exchangers. Now, though in many cars that pressure isn't evenly distributed across the front face, in most cars you still get plenty of pressure across the front of the intercooler or oil cooler or radiator, whatever you're talking about. So the real action actually happens behind those cores where you want as low a pressure as possible. Now, that's typically in the engine bay. So in the engine bay, in order to get best flow through those coolers, you want a low pressure. Do you get it? In some cars, yes, and in some cars, no. Let's have a bit of a think about what would govern the pressure build up in the engine bay. Let's imagine a little bit of air that's coming in through those front cores. Comes in, passes through those cores. Where does it end up? Ends up in the engine bay. And that's how the engine bay doesn't have many escape routes. So that bit of air stays there, and another bit comes in, and another bit comes in, and another bit comes in. So the pressure is starting to build up in the engine bay. If the pressure in the engine bay were to reach the same uh, level as the pressure on the front face of those uh, heat exchangers, there'd be no more airflow that would occur through the heat exchangers. So in the real world, what you want to achieve is low pressure in the engine bay. How is that achieved? Well, the air has to have escape routes, doesn't it? And where are those escape routes? Most of the air flows out the bottom, past an under tray if there's one present, but some air also flows out through the wheel wells. If you have a look in your car, next time you have the bonnet or hood up, you'll often see the openings between the engine bay and the wheel wells are larger than is actually really needed for steering arms or drive shafts in a front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And that's because quite a lot of air goes out that way as well. So if we're trying to encourage air to get out of the engine bay in order to get a low pressure, in order to achieve a high pressure differential, in order that a lot of air will flow through those heat exchangers, how do we do it? I mentioned an under tray a moment ago. A good quality under tray on a car will lower the pressure under the car. If the pressure under the car is lower, the air will be drawn out of the engine bay in turn, giving lower pressure in the engine bay. Of course, that lower pressure also reduces lift and a good under tray also reduces drag. And that's why I'm such a fan of working under the car because you can achieve benefits in three areas, not just one. Another way of encouraging air out of the engine bay is to use bonnet or hood vents. So if you have vents on the bonnet or hood, where there is a high pressure underneath and a low pressure on top, then the air will flow through. And it's not just theory. On one of my cars, which had an underbonnet intercooler, now that intercooler was horizontal and it was fed by a big front mounted scoop, but the same idea applies, I did some measurements. And I measured the pressure on top of the intercooler, and I measured the pressure underneath the intercooler, and there wasn't much difference. In, in fact, in some situations, the difference was the wrong way around. Air was actually coming in and flowing out through the front-mounted intercooler, uh, front-mounted uh, scoop. Uh, it just seems quite extraordinary to think of it like that. So, what did I do? Well, the first thing I did was I added a, a short under tray, and that definitely reduced the measured pressure in the engine bay. And then I added those, those hood, those bonnet vents, and that reduced the pressure another distinct step. So the pressure differential across the heat exchanger went up, went up, went up. Now, in the book, I, I cover that particular example. I show you the measurements that I was taking. I show you the, the hardware changes that I was making, the bonnet vents and the, the under tray, so you can actually see what it took to make it effective. It's, it's an interesting example, and it's one that's quite accessible uh, and quite applicable in many cars. So the book's called Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. Uh, it covers 
this sort of improvement that you can make, in fact, it's got a whole chapter on improving flow through heat exchangers, and I recommend the book to you. Thank you.